listening to the Agent Survival Guide Podcast. A podcast for today's insurance agents. Informing. Educating. Empowering. Improving the way you do business in an industry that's anything but static. In today's episode, creating lasting client relationships and avoiding customer churn. It is what every insurance agent wants. But how do we foster the client-agent relationship to keep our clients happy and continuing to come back for more? That is where a client retention strategy comes in. And if you've ever struggled to know where to start or how to move forward with a laser focus on retention, this is the episode for you. I recently sat down with Blake Amos, the Medicare Customer Retention Leader at Cigna Healthcare. He graciously answered my questions on client retention and has some tips on how to implement these strategies, as well as how agents can elevate their current retention efforts and really take their business to the next level. Here's our conversation. Joining us today on the podcast, we have Blake Amos, and he is the Medicare Customer Retention Leader at Cigna Healthcare. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today, Blake. Thanks for having me. Look forward to the discussion. We know that you're at Cigna Healthcare. You obviously work in the retention side of things now. But how did you get started in the industry? What made you interested in insurance in particular? Yeah, so when I was in grad school, I knew I wanted to be in the healthcare space. I could see that the industry had a lot of opportunity. You know, it impacts individuals at such a deep level. I knew that the work in the healthcare industry could be really meaningful to me, and hopefully I could add value to the industry. And so when I was in grad school, I actually thought, you know, I was really looking more on the provider side, looking for opportunities in that space. And then identified an opportunity within Cigna about 11 years ago to come in through a leadership development program. And this program gave me the opportunity to see different areas in the company, see kind of how everything works together and see really the payer side of the industry, especially in the Medicare Advantage space. I really liked the managed care space and the resources that we wrap around customers and how important the individual customer is to our business. And so, yeah, so that's kind of how I got started with Cigna. I held a variety of roles. Most recently, I led our market and product expansion efforts for about four years. So I think coming into that role, we were just under 20% of the addressable market nationwide. And so after Close to four years, we were just under 40% of the addressable market. So significant growth over that time. I think today we're at 45% of the addressable market. So we've had significant growth overall as a Medicare Advantage company. But with that comes a lot of challenges as well. So I like to say that I inadvertently created myself a new role. Because in all of these new markets where you have less brand awareness, you know, fortunately for us, With the Cigna brand, people were aware of Cigna, but not necessarily that Cigna offers Medicare Advantage products. That was new. We had less mature provider and broker relationships and even new types of customers coming in. So during that time, we also started offering PPO products for the first time. And so with all this new growth, we have less tenured customers that created a lot of headwinds for us and and retention Mm -hmm. challenges. And so about two years ago, I actually took this role leading customer retention and hopefully can make a positive impact there. Right, right. It's interesting just how you went through the different steps and roles there. I love the fact that you really identified that there was this issue of having people stay on and you created a role around that. I think a lot of companies have seen that happen recently that Not only is retention important to us as business owners, agencies, agents, but it's also really important for the customer, for the client. So let's maybe talk about just a brief definition of what exactly is 
client retention? What are we referring to when we say that? First and foremost, it's building relationships with customers that drives loyalty and trust. You know, I think at the end of the day, it's the difference between transactional and relational. And if you think about the customer journey for Medicare customers, healthcare decisions can be very emotional. And it's really important for customers to have someone that they can trust throughout that process that they know is looking out for their best interest and thinking about what client retention is. You know, I think retention efforts start at the shopping experience and at that point of sale. It's, you know, listening and understanding customers' needs. It's continuing throughout the life cycle, trying to provide that personalized guidance, you know, knowing that customers' needs are going to change over time. You know, I think while we continue to strive to improve our efforts as a health plan, the agent is in a unique position to really provide this value to customers. And that's why I think it's such an important thing for agents to be focused on. And one of the things I love about my role being able to lead customer attention for Cigna is that it's all about being hyper focused on the customer. It's understanding What are the pain points that customers are going through? What are the different steps in the customer journey? And then, you know, driving initiatives to improve the overall customer experience. And I think, you know, whether it's in my seat or the agency, ultimately client retention is doing what's best for the customer. And then your retention results will follow. Right. So I think you got into a little bit of this with your answer there with the definition of client retention, talking about some of the reasons why retention is so important. But I love that you have such a focus on the client in your answer, because I think we sometimes talk about focusing on, you know, the needs of the client from a compliance standpoint and making sure, you know, you're crossing all those T's, dotting your I's. This really takes the focus away from technicalities, you know, the insurance products and the compliance side of things and really puts a focus back onto that really human aspect of insurance. And like you said, that connection with the person that we're ultimately trying to help have a better healthcare outcome. Any other things that you would like to highlight as far as why you believe retention is so important for agents to be focused on? Yeah, you hit on a lot of key items there. You know, retention is so important because it can be a win-win-win for the Mm -hmm. health plan, the broker, and most importantly, the customer. You know, really starting with the customer, I like to say there really is a cost of switching. Obviously, agents need to make sure that customers continue to be in the right plan and that they're in the right plan for them. And each year plans do change, and that's not always the case. So switching plans is not a bad thing. But I think it's important to note that there is a cost associated with that. I mean, I put myself in the customer's shoes nowadays. And again, healthcare is really complex. You're coming into a new plan. You've got to learn a new portal. You need to figure out, based on all of the different supplemental benefits, who to call for what, what vendor to call, how the health plan processes work, who's in the network, who's out of the network, all the formulary type of stuff. So the customers that are switching plans every year, I feel like is really a disservice to themselves a lot of Mm -hmm. times. And so I think it's really important to keep that in mind. And I think, you know, as the health plan, it's really important that we keep customers with us because the more information that we have about the customer, the better we're able to understand their health needs, the more resources, clinical programs we're able to put in place to help that customer, you know, stay healthy. And then for the broker as well, there's, you know, obvious reasons and I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but it's consistent income. It's building a loyal base that's ultimately going to lead to referrals. I really think it's a win-win-win when we do retention right and when we get customers in the right plan, when the carrier is meeting the customer's expectations, we can all win with retention. And I think with the study that DEF just came out with, the AEP shopping and switching study, they showed that it's the highest switching rate in eight years. And so Mm -hmm. if you're not focused on retention efforts throughout the customer journey, someone else is going to come in and try to do that. And so it's really important to grow your book that way. It's funny that you say preaching to the choir. I feel like that sometimes, you know, that we talk about client retention over and over and over again. And sometimes I feel like, are we mentioning all the things that we really can talk about? So that's one of the reasons we're so excited to have you here to talk about your, obviously, area of expertise. 
but let's get into some of the retention resources that Cigna has for your agents. How do you come alongside the agents and help them if they don't have any any experience at all? <laughs> One of the key resources that we have in place is our local broker sales managers. So they really work to understand the, the types of customers that different agents, agencies are attracting, the plans that those customers prefer. They can also really help on collaborative initiatives around business development and marketing. But these resources, they're deeply trained on supplemental benefits. They understand all of the vendor information, key customer experience initiatives that we have in place. These resources specifically are dedicated to those external agents that the feed on the street so would really encourage you to engage them take advantage of their knowledge and also you know i hear a lot from these resources when we're not doing things right internally so if you're experiencing pain points or you wish we were doing something better these resources are a great channel to raise that feedback through because they make sure it gets to the right people and that we're addressing that so but we also offer a lot of training and education programs. So we do a lot of virtual retention trainings. Our uh, broker sales managers at the local level will host 15 minute pop in to learn trainings for agents where they can call in and learn about specific aspects of our plans. We put out a five part retention video series that are just short clips, four to five minutes that are focused on key pieces of the customer journey and really what agents should be highlighting with customers and focused on at different points. And the last two things I'll mention, we've got a retention playbook out there that is a great resource. And then the agent resource guide overall, really encourage agents to kind of dig into and then lastly it is really around data and reporting. So we, we try to make it as transparent as possible, how your book is performing, especially around key metrics. For example, you know, we'll be measuring rapid disenrollments and sharing that information and, and working with agents where we identify opportunities. Because again, we're all winning if we're doing well in that area. So what will it take to improve? We don't have it all together. You know, a lot of the things that we put in place have come from feedback that that we hear from the street and so you know my email is blake.amos at signahealthcare.com i encourage you to send me feedback you know what are we doing well where do we have opportunities it can even just be general you know how should carriers and agents be working together and collaborating more effectively to improve retention rates for everyone Definitely welcome that feedback. We will take that to heart and try to implement new things, new tools that can help you succeed from a retention standpoint, especially with your Cigna book. All right. Well, feedback, we always love feedback. And I love the fact that you guys take that into account and kind of grow solutions based on those pain points from how agents are actually dealing with things out in the field. Just want to take a quick moment to mention that those resources that Blake mentioned, we will have links to those resources in our episode notes. So the video clip series, the link to the playbook, and just all of those resources as they're available on Cygnus website, we will have those linked in the notes. So let's kind of drill down a little bit here. If I am an agent just starting out with client retention, it's a brand new topic to me. Maybe I'm brand new to the industry. Where would be the first place that you would suggest that I would start my efforts? The point of sale is such an important piece of their retention journey. I know we talk a lot about the follow-ups, check-ins and everything beyond that, but so much of whether we're going to be successful or not with a specific customer is based right there at the point of sale. I would encourage agents to really focus on how we listen to customers, making sure we're asking the right questions and really helping find the best plan for them. So, you know, that comprehensive needs assessment is so critical, making sure that we know all of the doctors that they're going to, and we're confirming that those doctors are in network, that we understand their drugs. The last thing we want is for a customer to get into their first 90 days and then be surprised. And so when we think about rapid disenrollments, a lot of the things we see is their doctor isn't in network. We should be able to prevent that. I know that there's provider data issues, and sometimes that can be a challenge, but in general, we should be able to prevent that. We see a lot of they go get their first prescription fill and the dollar amount's not what they expected or based on the formulary design, it's in a different tier than they expected. 
those are the types of things that we can prevent on the front end by asking the right questions, by doing the full needs assessment, and even level setting with the customer on what's to come, understanding when they're going to get their ID card, their welcome kit, like what the important resources are for them to pay attention to. Because if you're a senior, especially during AEP, it's so noisy, you're receiving so much. So being able to cut through the noise Mm -hmm. is really important. Even again, at that point of sale, it can be the little things like collecting email addresses. If the plan has an email address, we can do a much better job at personalizing communications to customers, especially around some of those key supplemental benefits, getting a PCP selection at the point of sale for HMO customers so that they don't have to go through an auto assignment process and one of their first experiences being a negative experience. So those are some of the things that you can do, and especially to prevent rapid disenrollments, but really set the customer up to be successful. Anytime someone's making a purchasing decision, you want to get value from that. You know, you want to get the customer activated and engaged with their health plan once they're effective. So start utilizing their benefits, seeing the value that they were sold on is really important. Those are some of the things I would recommend starting with, you know, as you're focusing on customer retention and setting up customers to be successful. I think those are some really good ideas. Now to kind of shift to the other end of the spectrum, what if I'm already an agent that's been in the field for a while, I have been focusing on certain aspects of retention How can I take that advice and then sort of elevate my efforts that I might currently be doing, whether it's, you know, follow up, anything like that? Yeah. So and even kind of going back to, you know, if you do a really good job on the front end and you listen while you're asking the right questions, you understand what's important to the customer, then you can really help them maximize the value that they're getting out of their benefits. So for example, if transportation is really important to a customer, you know, we want to know that on the front end and make sure that they understand how many rides do they get? How do they contact the transportation vendor? Following up with them to make sure especially that first experience went really well. And if not, escalate that to the plan and we will do everything possible to address that and make that right with the customer. Even beyond the most important benefits to a customer, thinking about some of the benefits There's so many times, and I completely understand it, I do this with things I have, but they don't even realize what all they have in their plan. And so continuing to educate them and make sure that they're not leaving money on the table, that they're participating in the customer incentive programs or you know, maximizing the value that they're getting out of their supplemental benefits. I think those continued check-ins, education, helping activate their benefits will really take your efforts to the next level. And then being an expert on plan offerings in your area, which I'm sure most people are that are listening to this, but understanding how plans are changing each year, because that's only going to help you become that trusted resource for the customer. And they know that they can go to you and get, here's how other plans are changing. Here's how your plan's changing. Here's what that means for you. And then also, you know, kind of hand in hand with that is managing the changing needs of customers. They come in on the front and need this based on their health conditions, where they're at in their journey, what's important to them. Those needs are going to continue to change. So staying in touch with that customer, understanding when they have life events that really impact them or new conditions diagnosed, those are important things to keep in mind and stay in connection with the customer so that you can ensure that they're in the right plan. And I think, you know, as we're starting to see more in the industry, which is great, as far as tailoring plans to specific personas or different customer segments. And while I think that there's a lot of value in that, that can create some retention challenges as well, because customers can just in their journey, they come in and that's the right plan for them, but then they have life events and that's no longer. So being able to understand kind of what that full customer journey looks like and understanding that just because a customer fit that at the beginning, it's going to become more and more important as products become more and more tailored for specific customers. Also, anytime you can personalize communications with customers, I think that there's a lot of value. That's something that we're really focused on as a carrier is how do we be more personalized and tailored in our retention strategy. So would encourage agents to really focus on areas to improve there. 
And then also how we collaborate between the carrier and the agent. So we have a lot of resources available to the customers. You guys do a lot for the customers. How do we make sure that we're collaborating and creating the best experience for that individual customers? I think those are some of the high points that I would hit as far as how agents can elevate their retention efforts. Okay. Now I know that we have talked about a lot of different ways that agents can take away from this episode, things that they can put into practice. Is there anything new and exciting in the world of client retention? New strategies, new technology? I don't know if you guys are looking at anything with AI, but is there anything that you're particularly excited about when it comes to client retention right now? Yeah, that's a great question. Maybe this starting point isn't too exciting, but but I think that, first of all, we should expect continued pressure from a switching standpoint in the industry. I know with the rate notices, the, the financial pressure that a lot of carriers have come out publicly discussing, I think we're going to see potential pullbacks in certain areas. And even the most minor pullbacks can cause customers to shop, you know, rightfully so, which makes it even more important for them to have that trusted resource to walk them through that and understand what that really means for them. But but I think that we're going to continue to see some pressure there, which means this is going to become more important. But what's exciting to your question is that I'm excited about Cigna has made a lot of investments, and I think some of our, a lot of our distribution partners are making a lot of investments around data science and analytics. That's critical to helping us understand customer behaviors, their needs throughout the process. And if we're able to have that information at our fingertips, we can better tailor retention strategies for specific types of customers. So I'm excited about kind of those capabilities and what that opens up for us. I think to your point around AI, I think generative AI does seem promising, but I think that there is a lot more to learn around that. And we have invested a lot in our predictive modeling, which helps Mm -hmm. us know who to engage when. And really what I'm hoping for out of some of like the generative AI stuff is really helping us know what messages are going to be impactful at what times, because I think Mm -hmm. we're good today at knowing who we need to engage based on some of that predictive modeling. But the message that's going to be effective, I think, is a challenge that we're still trying to overcome. And then kind of going back to some of the segmentation stuff I was talking about earlier, as more and more products are designed with a specific persona in mind, that dynamic segmentation ability kind of throughout the process to understand, you know, if they came in in a certain segment, where are they at throughout their journey? You know, I'm excited about some of the investments and the focus being made there. That's not only helpful from an acquisition strategy standpoint, but will be critical for retention moving forward. And then the last thing I would say is the omni-channel engagement. I think mm-hmm. any of our customers would say, we really love direct mail, <laughs> but how do we engage those customers more effectively in the way that they want to be communicated with? Because overall, I think the more that we can get personalized and improve our ability to tailor retention strategies based on the customer's needs and desires, we'll really be able to improve both our retention performance, but also the overall customer experience. So there's a lot I'm excited about here. And I think that plans and agents are making the right investments and focus in the right areas. Right. I think one of my biggest takeaways probably from this conversation is just to remember that the the client and where they are, that is kind of a fluid situation that's going to change over time. And to remember that just because you knew something when they first signed up, it's just like any other relationship that you have with anybody else. You need to continue with those ebbs and flows to continue taking in new information and kind of adjusting your approach. Is there anything else that you would like to add to to our conversation today? I appreciate you having me on. I always appreciate the opportunity to talk about retention, really bringing it back to the customer. But the way that I would close is really focus on doing what's right for the customer. You know, have a relational mindset, be empathetic to these customers, understand the importance of the decisions that they're making, because these are very important decisions and we should be respectful towards that. 
And if you truly care about doing what's right for the customer, your retention is going to speak for itself and you're going to see great growth in your book, both new customers and better retention of your existing customers. And then the only other thing I'll call out again is continue to give us feedback. You know, how can we be better partners to you? Is there something that we could be providing that would help you in your retention efforts? Is there something we should be doing better as a health plan that's giving your customers a better experience? That feedback is absolutely critical to us and we welcome it. So. All right. Well, that sounds great, Blake. Thank you so much for coming on and answering all of our questions and really giving such great insight into how agents can take this concept of client retention and understand it in order to have it be of benefit to not just them, but especially their clients. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Appreciate you guys and what you do and and really appreciate the focus on retention. So great talking with you. Yeah, you as well. I want to say thank you again to Blake Amos, Medicare Customer Retention Leader with Cigna Healthcare. Very interesting to hear his take on approaching retention, coupled with his industry experience. And then, of course, all of the resources that Cigna offers around this topic. We have the links to all of those resources we mentioned in our episode notes, so be sure to check those out. One of the biggest things Blake stressed as we talked, the value of feedback, and I can definitely echo that sentiment. If you have specific questions that you'd like for him to address, feedback that you can give him, he mentioned his email in the interview. That will be linked in the notes as well. I encourage you to take him up on that and reach out if you have questions. And of course, if you have feedback for us about the show, maybe you have an idea for our next guest, feel free to email that over our way as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen today. We hope you enjoyed the interview, and we will see you next episode. The Agent Survival Guide podcast is a production of Ritter Insurance Marketing, an integrity company. This episode was recorded and produced by me, Sarah Rupel. Special thanks to Blake Amos for the interview. Script Proofing by Tina Lamaru. Podcast design by Urban Rivera. Artwork by Vivian Zhao. Follow along with our show wherever you like to listen. 